Hi guys, and here we are with the new 2018 Honda Accord. We're finally getting a chance to review this car. Now, this car is actually the 10th generation of the Accord uh, lineage, if you like. They've made 17 and a half million of these since the first generation. That was back in 1977, 78, since they came along. And uh, this one that we're getting here in our region is actually an American-made version. Now, the car is actually quite a bit different from the previous car. It is in fact 15 millimeters shorter, 10 millimeters wider, and in fact it is also uh, lower as well. But somehow they put more room inside it. In fact, they're saying that they've got 53 millimeter longer wheelbase on this car to give you that more interior room. Now it's a handsome enough thing, certainly a lot sleeker, a lot sharper profile than before, and I would say more distinctive than the previous two generations of Accord. By all means, I, I would definitely go with that. I still have to say though, my favorite is still the third generation 86 Accord with the pop-up lights. You just can't beat that one. So you get two engine choices with this car now, both turbos, both four cylinders. And it starts with a 1.5 and that gives you 198 brake horsepower and 192 pounds foot of torque. And that's actually made it to a CVT gearbox and does zero to 100 in about 7.3, seven something seconds. That's, uh, that's what you get. Prices for those start from, uh, and in fact from the range, start from 94,900 which is about $26,000, and for that you get the LX. Step up to the uh, LX Sport, and you, get, you pay 104,900 dirhams, which is $28,000. Go to the top of the range for the 1.5, and you're looking at an EX Sport, which would be 119,900 dirhams, which is uh, $33,000. Now this car, of course, is the range topping car. This is the two liter turbo, and this engine actually puts out 247 brake horsepower and 273 pounds foot of torque. And it's got a very flat torque curve, so the acceleration is very, very constant. Therefore, the zero to 100 time on this car is quite remarkable. It's just over six seconds. How much are you thinking this one is worth? Well, yeah, it's a fair bit. It's 139,900, which is $38,000. So it's not on the cheap side. So the question that you then have to ask, well, is it worth it? That's a lot of money for an Accord. Well, let's have a look at the practicality of the car and we'll start as usual with the boot. So let's have a look back here. There's a simple catch over there. Opens quite high and quite wide. Very, very light, this uh, boot lid as well. Over here, you've got a pretty deep boot, and back there, you can see 60 40 split folding seats there, so quite spacious. This is just the uh, the first aid stuff that uh, I'll put them Honda sticks in there. It's all your triangle and all that sort of stuff here. The floor lifts up, and under the floor, you actually have pretty much a full size spare wheel uh, with an alloy, so I think that is pretty much a full, uh, that is actually a full size wheel. There's tools over here, nicely laid out, and there's just a, a blank spot over here. Not much else, really. Uh, there's, a, there's a hook. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you get. So let's see what the rear compartment is like and see if I fit in it. Wow, you can certainly see, well, they say this got 48 millimeters of extra knee room or leg room in here. And my goodness, it's like being in a limousine. I can really stretch out. I've got absolutely no issues whatsoever. Plenty of room under my leg, tons of room for my knees. No problem with my shins touching the bottom of the seat in front, which by the way, this is my driving position. I've actually turned the car on because the seat actually goes back into the driver's position and that is my driving position and uh, no issues whatsoever, even plenty of room for my feet. So what do you get back here? You get two AC vents. Um, that's pretty much it really, which is a little bit surprising in the top of the range car. You get a couple of cup holders in here. I'm looking for USBs and I'm not seeing them. I do know that there is a USB in the cubby box, so there's two. One up front for the driver in the dashboard and one in the cubby box, but where are the ones back here? We do get Isofix child anchor points in the uh, rear seat, so that's quite handy. And as mentioned, these seats do fold down. You get your rear lights over here. You get quite uh, useful pockets, not particularly deep, but useful there. And that's pretty much it. That's your lot. Uh, but I have to say it's very nicely pointed and quite inviting. But the main thing about it is the spaciousness. Let's see if the front is equally comfortable. Right then, the business end of the Accord. Very, very nice in here. It's got a sort of a three tier layer to how it's done. It's got this floating uh, infotainment system now. I think that's about eight inches across and uh, it keeps all the infotainment systems on there. All of your sat nav and all of the other things are on there. When you first get into the car and you switch it on, you're greeted by an image of Asimo, that famous Honda robot waving at you. So that's kind of nice, isn't it? The car's saying hello. Uh, and you get all the Bluetooth and everything. And in this particular car, the two liter uh, Sport, it has a 10 speaker, 450 watt uh, sound system. 
So it's not just the gears that's turned off. Now talking of the gears, this is where some people will be very confused because there's no gear lever here, there's no gear knob here, there's just a series of buttons. And in fact, this layout is similar to what you would find in the Acura or the Honda NSX, the new one. Um, they also have these buttons. This, of course, like I said, is the new 10-speed gearbox. And in fact, the Accord is one of the only cars, I think, in its segment um, to have that many gears that's a lot of ratios you've got an eco button underneath it and a sports button we'll be giving those a bit of a try later on two cup holders over here and here you have a compartment that opens up at some point it opens up eventually like it does now and inside there you've got a deep pocket where you can put your uh, your phones and stuff um there isn't a, a, a wireless charging plate on this one at the moment that i can tell but it does have a usb there and it also has a power outlet so that's quite handy so as i said usb one in there usb two is in here with again another power outlet and you also have a removable tray but it's quite a big uh, cubby box there that's quite handy um other than that you've got climate control i've been using the ac it's very nice there's a nice bit of trim here um, the steering wheel has got all the controls on it and this car is packed full of kit. I mean, I, let me just run through it for you because it's got a lot of driver's aids on it. Collision mitigation, pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, active cruise, which is this button over here. And it has a low speed follow. So in traffic, you can leave it on active cruise and it should uh, low speed follow there. And it even has driver attention monitor. So it keeps an eye on you to make sure you haven't fallen asleep or anything like that. Once on the move, you'll also see that it's got a noise cancellation system with an extra speaker on this car added here just to even quieten it further around the driver there's a lot of sound deadening on this car including they've gone to some crazy extents in fact they've even put like a sound resonator inside the alloy wheels to try and cut out road noise it's incredible on the instrument panel you have a, 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 a digital display on the left side the right the speedometer is actually an analog and the whole left side although it looks like an analog rev counter it is actually digital and on here you can operate the trip computer which gives you that fuel economy trips and all the rest of it and operate certain other uh, of the systems over here you have the traction control you've also on this car got a heads up display and from here you can actually adjust the height of that so that's quite handy you've got quite a useful door pocket uh, again you can put a bottle in there the boot opener is there. Interesting, uh, first time I've seen on an Accord, they don't have the uh, fuel cover release down here on the floor because that's been a Honda Accord thing right from the first generation, but that's gone now. In fact, if you just push the cover from outside, it opens. So I don't know how I feel about that. I, it would be nice to have kept that tradition. So other than that, it's all very comfortable. The only other thing I would add is the visibility has improved because what they've done is they've made these A pillars a lot slimmer than before. And they claim that you get 7.9 degrees of extra visibility at the front. They certainly are quite slim compared to a lot of modern cars, but you know what? The best thing is see how this feels by taking it for a drive. Well, once it hits that curve, that flat curve, so yeah, now we're there, now the acceleration is constant. So it takes a little while to build up, and then once you hit that flat part of that curve, off it goes. So the other thing about Accords and Hondas in general is that they're supposed to be really keen to drive. They've always been very keen to drive, uh, especially the Accord. And with this car, you do get some of that back. I mean, the steering is fairly uh, accurate. The understeer immediately cuts back. So there is understeer, obviously it is a front wheel drive car, but it immediately cuts back to, um, to a more neutral attitude. And it does kind of pull itself around, as you can see just there. The main thing about the car is how smooth it is. And uh, you know, that suspension is really good. By the way, did I mention these seats are really comfortable? And I think one of the reasons they, they are is because they've actually increased the side bolsters of these seats to give more support to your shoulder. So we're on the brakes now. Again, very linear, very nice and smooth, just as you'd expect they will throw around this roundabout and again very good grip you get a little bit of tire squeal but the steering is very accurate nicely weighted as well not a tremendous amount of fuel it's not a sports car but sufficient to give you an idea of what actually is going on with the car again the pickup and the momentum is really really good very smooth very little wind noise some of that sound deadening at work there so we're just going to go right into this corner here as well and it's just quite a sharp right so let's see how it fares with that so road is completely clear. So yeah, it's funny how the understeer is immediately caught and then brought back. It's sort of like the reins are suddenly pulled tight and gone, right, no, you've got to go this way. So it's, it's quite nice how, how it does that. So I've got to say, and that is like a sweeping fast corner, a little bit of body roll, but very good uh, road holding, very good grip. So I've got to say that actually, surprisingly, satisfying to drive and i feel some of that old honda magic coming back into the accord and i think that some of the previous generations have been uh not un uh, not i wouldn't say they were bad but they were maybe a little bit uh, uninteresting a bit tepid but this one i think there's a little bit of an oomph there certainly the performance is like put it down here where 
4,000 RPM, picks up, straight away we're doing silly speeds already, I don't want to tell you what it is, but, <laughs> but it's a fair old whack. And uh, I think that all things considered, I think they've done a fantastic job with this car. Um, I have driven the 1.5 and I've got to be honest, I definitely prefer this one for two reasons. A, this one does have that incredible, uh, that torque that it just comes on so strong. And secondly, the gearbox. Now, I didn't mention, but this does have paddles. It does have paddles. And once you flick one, you can go into paddle shifts. I tried it before, wasn't really worth it. Honestly speaking, there's 10 speeds. How are you going to keep track of what speed you're supposed to be in? Plus, you don't get that satisfying thunk uh, when you change gears. So really, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Out of the two, the 1.5 or the 2 liter, I have to say I definitely prefer the 2 liter. If you're into performance, if you're into uh, driving satisfaction, the 2 liter Sport is definitely the one to go for. But if you're, but in terms of equipment and spec and all the rest of it and day-to-day -day use and good fuel economy, then probably the 1.5 will actually meet most of your needs, especially when you consider that this is nearly 140,000 dirhams. Which is, which is a fair bit of money. So there you go. There's our review of the 2018 Honda Accord. I hope you enjoyed the review. Do let us know what you thought of the car and of the review in the comments below or elsewhere. Just let us know what you thought. And do please check us out on motoringme.com and all the social media. There's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, please do like, share and subscribe. And you know what? Follow me as well on Instagram. I'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one.